off in Adobe Illustrator. Um, you've got your mug that you've created. Mine doesn't have a handle. Um, I'm going to create a handle real quick. I'm just going to add something, nothing special. Now I'm going to uh, affect 3D, and this one, if you remember, is going to be extrude. I'm going to boost up the stroke, which are these lines over here, or if they're not showing up here, you can go window, stroke, and the window will open for you. So I'm just gonna beef up the stroke, make it a bit thicker, and then in the extrude, I'm going to get, turn on the bevel. I'm going to change the bevel type to round. And the width is going to be 100%. And then I got a better understanding if I need to increase the thickness of my stroke. So right now the handle is on top. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. And then I'm actually on my keyboard, I'm going to hit Command Shift Open Bracket, and that will do this. It will send it to back. And then I can kind of shrink it to how I feel it might be best. I'm going to leave my name on it just because uh, I'll be able to see it in placement, and you'll be able to tell that later on that this is something that I added. So I'm going to hit save, then I'm going to do file, export, export as, and then from there I'm going to save it into a folder and it's going to be coffee mug and then just my name. So I'm going to save it in there and I'm going to save it as a PNG. There's a ping file, and when I do it this way, the background is going to be transparent. I could tell it to be white or black, but I'm just going to leave it to be transparent. So I'm going to quit out of this program. <clears throat> so on my desktop now, I have a folder named Coffee Cup Scene. So what I would do is create a folder on your desktop. And again, you can do that just by right clicking or control clicking on your desktop and choose new folder. And then just name it coffee cup scene. Okay. And in there, you're going to save your mug, the image of the cafe that you're going to download from canvas and also the table that you're going to download from Canvas. <clears throat> now, we're going to jump over into Photoshop. Most of you should, uh, should have already used Photoshop. In fact, as I'm saying that, I can't really rem <clears throat> excuse me, I can't really remember. So what we're going to do <coughs> is we're going to click on one of the JPEGs, for example, the uh, cafe one, and we're going to Command I. So on your keyboard, just press Command I. And if we zoom into that, down here, it says open with, and this is all the information for this image. I'm just gonna change it to be Adobe Photoshop 2023. Then you're going to hit change all. You're going to hit continue. And that's it. You're ready to go. So now what we're going to do is just open up the cafe image. Double click it. Photoshop should open. And uh, what we're going to do, it, it's opened up full size, but it's not as big as I would like it to be. So I'm just going to hit Command Plus, which will help us zoom in to the image. 
Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to place a coffee table in the lower right hand corner. Uh, I look for a table that's kind of the same perspective as the rest of the room so that it's tilted on the same plane as the other tables. At least it's pretty close. Then we'll go to File, Open, and we're going to go to the desktop, to that folder, and we're going to select the table right there, and we're going to hit Open. So it's opened up the new image. Um, let me just try something a minute before I tell you what to do next. All right. I just wanted to see if that would uh, if that would work. So what we're going to do in this instance is we're using a few techniques. Um, if you go to and because I'm not sure that we all have the same version of Photoshop, we're going to do it a particular way. So you're going to click on the magic wand. And then you're going to click on the white. And we'll click on the white uh, up here as well. Now, it didn't collect all of it. That's because the tolerance up here is set to 25. So I'm going to set mine to 45, which just means it's going to select more of the white. And then I'm just going to click in the shadow area down here. And then click up into these white areas. And then I would zoom in and click that little white area as well here. Now, there is a better way to do this, but until I know that we're all on the same, um, until I know that we're all on the same uh, version of software, I just want to do it this way. So right now, we've got all the white selected, so we need to select the opposite. And to do that, it's Command-Shift-I or Select Inverse. And now we can hit copy, command C, or edit, copy. And now we've copied the table. So now we can go back over to this area and press, press command V or edit and paste. And there's our, our table in. It's too big right now, but that's okay. Now we're going to hit we're going to click on uh, V, or which is the uh, uh, the move tool up here, the crosshairs, and we're going to press Command T for transform, or let's see, where is it? There it is down there. Free transform, Command T. And then drag a corner, grab grab a corner, and then just reduce it. Do not hold the keyboard. Uh, do not press shift or anything because it will distort it. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to make this table pretty big because it's, it's close to us. And we're just going to have it cover something like that. Like when things are closer to us, they're bigger. And we're just going to cover what was there and then to place it just double click so now we have a table that's there now I don't know if you can see it but there's actually a white halo all the way around the table so if I zoom in there's like this very faint white line you can see it quite a bit over here around the edge so at this point, what I'm going to do is go to Layer, Matting, Defringe. Right now it says one pixel. I'm going to leave it at one pixel. I'm going to zoom in so you can see it. And when I hit OK, it should remove this white halo around the table. And it did. 
So now it's a much cleaner uh, table. We can play with the color and uh, the contrast and what have you a little bit later. Now the next thing I want to do is it, it all looks a bit cluttered. I want to add um, a little bit of soft focus to the background. So to do that, you're going to click on this lock to unlock the background layer. Then we're going to, now we're going to right click on this layer and we're going to convert it to a smart object. Now, when we do that, it enables us to make some edits to this image and those edits will be uh, reversible later on if we save the image and close it. Um, if we made this image blurry without making it a smart object, when you open it up again a month from now, a year from now, you will not be able to undo that blurriness. So now I'm going to go, we're still on the background, I'm going to go to filter up top, blur, Gaussian blur. Right now it's a little bit too much, so I'm just going to reduce it. I just want to bring the focus away from the background a little bit and kind of bring it to the the uh, the foreground where the new table is. So that's pretty good. I'm going to hit OK. Now, we can at any point, if we save this and open it back up, we can turn it back to the original, which is good. Now we want to get our coffee cup. So we're going to go over to Illustrator. Now, you'll remember that I did briefly cover the fact that we can change the angle and the perspective of our coffee cups. <clears throat> so let's have a look at this. <clears throat> so there's the cup. I'm just going to reset my workspace to put everything back. <clears throat> now, the trouble is, if I, if I export this, so we go File, Export, Export As, so if I do this, I'm just going to put Mug1, I just kept it all the default settings. Now I'm going to go back to Photoshop. If I bring in that, if I bring in that um, coffee mug, my key commands are not working right now. So what I'll do is I'll do uh, fire file um, import. Uh, no, I'm going to open. I'm going to open. I'll grab the mug. I'll select all. And you do that by Command A or select all. And then copy, which is edit, copy, or Command C. I'm going to close it. I'm going to zoom out. <clears throat> and then Command V, which is paste. Edit, paste, which is Command V. It's massive. Then I'm going to Command T for transform. Remember that one because that one's going to be a big one. I'm just going to shrink it down. Not too small. Remember, this is in the foreground. Now, it's not showing currently because it's behind the table. And as you can see over here, it's under the table. So you can either grab the table down or bring the coffee table up and then it's on the table. The only issue is <clears throat> that mug is at the wrong angle. It doesn't, it's not correct. So what I'm going to have to do is delete that, go back to Illustrator and change the angle of this mug. So I know that 
this has already got 3D applied to it. And to access those settings, what I need to do is go to the little sun, the appearance, or if it's not showing up there, you can go up to window, down to appearance, and then that will, when you click on the, the, uh, the mug, that will actually show you everything that's done to it. Now, unfortunately, oh, this is the PNG. So I'm going to open up that Illustrator version, which is here. <clears throat> you cannot edit a PNG because that's fixed. But now this one, again, we're in the appearance window. We can see if we click away, click back on it. This is all the stuff that was um, done to this mug. So I'm going to click on 3D materials. That will open up all the effects for what we have done to the mug currently. Now, I did this earlier, and I know that if I change the perspective to 49 degrees, that's going to roughly be where it needs to be. Um, and I'm going to say the handle as well. That handle also needs to be changed but I'm just going to change it a little bit I'm not going to change it as much just so visually it looks good so I got my mug I've got the angle so now again I'm going to do file export export as and this one I'm going to change it to mug 2 and then I'm going to quit this Back in Photoshop, I'm going to do Command O, which is File, Open. I'm going to go to Mug 2. See, look, if we zoom in, we can see here's Mug 1, here's Mug 2. And it's the same mug, it's just being seen from a slightly different angle, slightly different perspective. I'm going to hit Open, Select All, Copy, Close, and again, Select all file. Uh, where's copy? File select all edit copy. I'll close it and again I will I will paste it. It's gonna be massive again. Image uh, is it? No, it's Edit Transform, which is Command T, Free Transform. And then I just drag a corner and I shrink it down. And again, if it was behind, and something like this would be perfect. It might be too big, but what I want to do next is focus on putting a drink inside the mug. We're not going to do that today. That would be another lesson. But now we got our coffee mug. On a table, the table's more or less okay, um, and the mug is uh, at a good perspective for the room. Um, and then, what I might even do is click on the table. I'm going to click on this uh, layer name here. I'm going to name this table, and I'm going to double click on this this thing here. I'm going to name it mug. And I'm going to do this uh, this one down here, double click it, and name this one uh, BG for background. And the reason is because over here, if you right click, you can choose the mug, the table, or the background. So if you wanted the background, you could choose the BG, and then you can move the background. If you right click on this, you could say, you know what, I want to choose the mug and then you can move the mug around and then obviously the same for the table all right so that is all i want you to do today um, there's actually a few things in here which i showed you how to do uh, techniques to perform but the next will be changing the color maybe on the table and maybe i just leave you with that so i'm on the table 
go to Image, Adjustments, and let's try Hue and Saturation maybe. Maybe just boost the saturation. Boost it up a little bit. Maybe just a touch. Drag the lightness down. Just making it a bit more rich. And in here, you could actually even colorize it. So you could even make it color. But I wouldn't necessarily do that because um, it, I want it to look as realistic as possible. OK, so that is the first little kind of bringing all the elements together in a, in a composition.